Hi everyone, my name is Paula and I am one of the three sisters of Relatively Refined. On this channel, my sisters Kathleen, Patty, and I hope to inspire you to make your life beautiful on a budget. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we would love for you to be part of the Relatively Refined family. Hit the notification bell and we will notify you whenever we upload a video. We try to upload on Mondays and Thursdays whenever possible. We are aiming for 500 subscribers and we are about halfway there. So help some sisters out and go ahead and subscribe to our channel. All right, without further ado, let's jump into today's video. So I stopped into Goodwill today and I was kind of poking around and I was in the book section, which I really like to look through the book section. I work in a school, I'm a school counselor at an elementary school. So I use books in my lessons a lot and I really enjoy um, reading stories to kids and using them to help teach lessons. So I'm always perusing the bookshelves for bargain books. But anyway, today what I found was this awesome, vintage cookbook. It's the Betty Crocker Dinner Parties, a contemporary guide to easy entertaining. And I thought, look, look at the cover of this. I love vintage cookbooks. I love cookbooks anyway, but I especially love vintage ones. So I texted my sister Patty and she said, nobody knows how to entertain like somebody from the seventies. And she is exactly right. So I got this, I think it was $1.69. All hardback books, I believe, at my Goodwill are $1.69. Is that not awesome? And when you look through it, I'm going to actually put my glasses on for this real quick. And it's um, copyright 1970. And I'm just going to hold up and show you a couple of the pictures. I mean, here's a picture of like a tailgating <laughs> picnic. And it has, you know, the recipes. It's just awesome. The pictures, the... Um, photographs, the graphics, everything. It just screams 1970s. Even the, even the recipes scream 1970s. An exotic Indian dinner with shrimp curry and cucumber spinach toss. I mean, it is just so fun. So I decided um, I want to make a theme meal. I'm going to um, pick up one of the themes that they have in this book and cook the whole meal and see. I don't know. The front cover has some kind of like molded something. I don't know exactly what that is. I don't think that would probably go over well with my kids, but, or me, frankly, <laughs> I'm not much for molded things anyway, but this book got me thinking, you know, I actually have quite a little collection of vintage cookbooks. And so I thought today I would share with you just a, some of what I have and they're all, they're really fun. I mean, the graphics and the pictures in vintage cookbooks are so fun. Um, even if the recipes aren't necessarily anything that you would make and <laughs> or eat. Um, but I want to share with you one very special one. And this is actually not one that I thrifted. This was my cookbook when I was a little girl. This is Betty Crocker's new boys and girls cookbook. And it is, I mean, it has been well loved. I mean, the cover is completely off of the cookbook. I got this, I don't know, I was probably like seven maybe when I got this, seven or eight possibly. Um, so it would have been very early 70s. And it was advertised on the back of the Cheerios box. And if you saved enough Cheerios box tops and you sent in however many box tops you needed to and a check for some small amount of money. Um, several weeks later in the snail mail, you would get this awesome cookbook. And so that's exactly what I did. I saved the box tops and my mom wrote out the check and mailed it in. And then this cookbook came to me in the mail eventually. But let me just show you. I mean, it is so cool. The pictures in it, the graphics, um, just awesome. At the beginning of it, it has um, kind of this whole section, what every junior cook needs to know. And it teaches you about um, measurement, you know, how conversions, how many half cups in a cup or teaspoons in a tablespoon, all those kinds of things. And look at this table of contents. Look at the graphics on that. It is awesome, is it not? I love that. 
Um, so as I said, this, this is the cookbook that started it all. Um, this was mine uh, when I was, you know, very young. So I'm 57. So this is, you know, this is probably 50 years old, this cookbook. Then um, when I got a little older, uh, my grandmother gave me this Fanny Farmer's, Fanny Farmer Junior Cookbook. Now this doesn't have like graphics or pictures in it, but it does, oh, let's see. It has some main dishes, <laughs> main dishes. French toast, I guess that would be a good main dish for a junior cook. But anyway, um, this was mine and you can see on the inside I wrote my name and um, we were, I was talking with Patty about how old I must have been. You know, I was writing in cursive, but we learned that, I think, cursive in second grade or so back in the day. So this, I was probably like maybe fifth or sixth grade when I got this cookbook um, from my grandmother. All right. Um, <laughs> I, um, I'm going to just kind of show you a sprinkling of the cookbooks that I have. This um, Better Homes and Gardens Junior Cookbook. Um, for cooks of all ages, this I got as a joke for my son because he he hates cooking. He's going to be a freshman in college in the fall, and he absolutely hates cooking. He avoids it at all possible, when at, whenever possible. Um, but I was like, you, you got to learn to make something because a you can't afford to eat out every meal, and you need to be able to make yourself something. So I got him this cookbook as a joke, um, but the inside is great i mean it's got the there's potato salad tossed green salad i mean i think he could probably figure out how to make a green salad but who knows um and it also shows let's see cooking can be so easy and here's like cooking terms and again measure how to measure how to measure dry ingredients, wet ingredients. Let's see if I can find, um, ooh, Boston cream pie. That actually seems like kind of complex for, for a <laughs> junior cook, but it's really fun. I don't think there are any color pictures in this one. There are, oh, well, there's snack time, circus time. Um, this was, Copyright published, copyright 1972. It was originally published in 1963, but this is a 1972 version of it. <laughs> so anyway, I just think that, the, again, like look at the cover on that. It's phenomenal, isn't it? And then I'm just going to quickly show you some of my other ones. Um, I have this really cool, this is um, Better Homes and Gardens Cakes and Pies. And one of the fun things, I got all of these at um, the thrift store. One of the fun things about getting secondhand cookbooks is that sometimes you find little treasures inside. Like in this one, when I opened it up, it had these recipes in there that whomever uh, had this cookbook before me cut out from the newspaper. There's chocolate silk pie, cranberry top chocolate pie, sweetened whipped cream, um, stacked tort is another one. So these were kind of tucked inside. Let's see, this is a little tiny one. Key lime pie, just little treasures. So I just leave them right inside this cookbook and I keep them in there. Um, I have several Betty Crocker cookbooks. This is the From Freezer to Refrigerator, a do-ahead cookbook. I have two versions of this that I found. This, um, look at the picture on the front of this. I love that. It's like 1970s, isn't it? Late 70s, probably. Um, let's see. I have the Good and Easy cookbook. This is 1972, and it has, uh, let's see if I can find some pictures. Oh, there's desserts and confections. It's just really fun. I just think they're so cool. Um, you know, nowadays you can just get whatever you want off the internet, a recipe if you're looking for it. But I don't know, there's something about a cookbook and these old cookbooks. Like I said, I like to see which pages are dog-eared or turned down so, you know, you can see which... Um, recipes with someone's favorite, which ones they made over and over. 
Um, I do have a bunch of other um, Better Homes and Gardens cookbooks, like this is a fish and seafood cookbook. Um, this is a quick breads cookbook. This is the barbecue book. Shows you how to grill. Look at the cover of that. Isn't that awesome? Let's see if I can find some. I mean, the, again, the graphics on the inside are always so fun. Let me find a fun page. Okay, this is a fun page. Look at the graphics on that. Isn't that great? I just absolutely love it. Um, here's another one. Cooking for two. Really fun. Let's see. Peanut butter brownies, nectarine sherbet, all kind of fun stuff. Um, let me see. I know I have some other ones I wanted to share with you that are really fun. This one is one of my favorites, aside from the one that was mine as a little girl. I love this. This is Parties for Children. Look at the cover. Look at the colors on that. I mean, it just would make a great display just somewhere in your house. I mean, the graphics are so cool. Parties for Children. Um, it has like ideas for different games, um, party clothes. Um, there's one picture in here. Look at this. Crafts for the different months that you might have a party in. Just so fun. There's this one page that I absolutely love. Oh, map making. Let's see if I can find that page. This is kind of fun. Just all the, look at the pictures. I mean, are those not awesome? I can't tell if I've got, there we go. Just so fun. This one I really love. This party's for children. Um, and just the cover, just look how fun and festive that cover is. It's awesome. Then um, I have, let's see, what's another one? I do have a couple. I don't have very many Christmas cookbooks, but I do have a couple. Um, this one is from 1998. This is the Gooseberry Patch Christmas cookbook. I love the um, check, the red and white checkered um, border on this one. And again, this one is fun because some of the pages have been dog-eared and marked. So you can tell, you know, what somebody's favorite recipes were. But it has all kinds of delicious looking recipes in there. But I thought this was also fun. And then this one is, I think, this next one is from the 70s. Yeah, this is 1972. This is a Christmas ideal book. Um, and so it has ideas for Christmas crafts, Christmas decorating, um, you know, recipes. The, again, the pictures are really cool. This is Cookies in a Hurry, it's called. Um, Sweets and Sours. Gifts in jars. Just really, really fun. You can see it has some pictures on the back as well. I just love all of these. Um, let's see. I do have some more Better Homes and Gardens in here. Um, oh, this, this one was so funny. Calorie Counters Cookbook. On the front it says, Slimming Recipes, Appetizers to Desserts. I guess we could all use some slimming recipes now and then, huh? Um, so I thought this was really fun. A pineapple mold, an artichoke, artichoke fruit salad. Hmm. Here it tells some exercise and weight loss. Gives you like a calorie chart, how many calories are in different foods, different exercise. <laughs> I don't know. I just got a great kick out of this when I saw it. Um, and it has some more pictures on the back. Just, just kind of a fun thing. And then um, the last set of cookbooks I want to share with you is um, are these. Hang on. So this is um, the Better Homes and Gardens um, new cookbook, and you'll recognize this. I mean, this is you see this a lot, and 
antique stores and thrift stores as well. And it basically, you know, any kind of any recipe you need or basic cooking technique for meat or bread, anything is in this cookbook. It's kind of like the, you know, cooking Bible for um, beginning cooks and even, you know, advanced cooks. And so I wanted to collect four copies of this so that I could give one to each of the kids as they kind of flew the nest, left the nest. Um, so I do, I have four copies of this. I think they're from different years, but they're all, you know, it's all very, very similar. It has that, you know, familiar red and white checked cover with the black and white writing on it. So I got four copies of those. And then the last thing that I want to share with you is um, an idea that you could maybe use with your own kids as they grow up. So excuse me while I reach, reach across here and get a few things. I don't know why I put them so far away, but I did. So anyway, excuse me while I do that. Um, so my grandmother one year um, for Christmas wrote down all of her recipes, all the recipes that were our favorites and compiled them in little recipe boxes and gave them to each one of her granddaughters and her daughters-in-law. And I, I just thought that was the greatest gift because she was an awesome cook and there were so many of her recipes that we just loved. And so having them in her handwriting was just so special and such a, just such a thoughtful, you know, really a gift from the heart. She spent all year, you know, writing down these recipes and I'm trying to think how many granddaughters she had, but she had to make five or six copies of each of the recipes and all written by hand on recipe cards. So I thought, well, that would be something I would like to do for my kids. So I have been collecting recipe boxes from the thrift store. Whenever I see them, I needed to collect four of them. Same way I wanted four copies of the um, Better Homes and Garden Cookbook, I wanted four recipe boxes. So I have collected four recipe boxes, um, all different ones. And I don't think I paid more than a a dollar or two for any of them. So there's this kind of fall leaf one. This is my favorite. This one says Sally Star's Treasure Chest. And it's very kind of vintage looking graphics on that. Um, this one is also very cool. I love this one. And then finally there is um, kind of this gold and cream colored one. This one still has the thrift store stickers on it. But I thought that would be something really special that I could give to each of the kids as they grow up so that they have their favorite recipes from home and, you know, they can make them for their families when they have their own families. So that is my vintage cookbook collection, or at least part of it. And I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Do you collect cookbooks or what do you collect? Um, do you use a cookbook still? How do you get your recipes? I'd be curious to, to know um, if, if people still use cookbooks because you know you can get everything on the internet now. So anyway, thank you so much for sticking with me to the end. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.